And welcome back to Sports Check this Monday morning. My name is Daniel Wahome. Our sign language interpreter is Simon Karuta. And we are in conversation talking about the Afro Basket qualifiers. And Kenya will be playing against Angola, Senegal, and Mozambique on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of February in Yaoundé, Cameroon. And in studio, we have got the coach of the Kenya Morans, Sadat Gaya, and center, Tom Bush Wamukota. Our conversation as we went into the break was about video analysis is in sport it is something that is critical and there is an introduction of a video analyst and coach Sadat let me come into the uh, bring this aspect because you have mentioned it how has it changed game man, uh, management for you as a coach given that you've got to watch videos of your opponents and also of your team as they play See, see, the 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 good thing with the video analysis is it tells you that it tells you that it tells you the the, the truth, the real picture. Because uh, you see, we, we get to know that uh, there are some sets we're executing that we're not executing well. Now we need, uh, like uh, right now, we, we are making adjustments in our sets, and we are, we're also seeing where our opponents are killing us. Because uh, you, you know, you, you know, you cannot trust your memory. That saying that uh, you, you, you did this and that, did that. The good thing with video analysis is when you break it down, when you break, you break it down to the, you tell the players that you see, like, like uh, here, here you're not, you're not running back on defense. Here, here you're not boxing out. Here you're not putting a body or, or going for the basketball. Here you're not in help position. Here you're not playing a great defense. So with that, <coughs> with, uh, with, with the video video breakdown, it, it has brought a lot of uh, accountability. And for you players, and um, uh, for you Bush, uh, you've been cultured that and um, through the U.S. college system. And how do you? You know get to adapt to this you know simply being told here is the evidence that the moves you're making are wrong or this is a, uh, the kind of set that you need to retain and this is what you need to improve like for example like when I was in college in uh, at Wichita State uh, our coach like um, for nobody really liked the video session because man it was a grilling session it was a tough we have one tough session you know like It'll, you know, it will show you like and get on, get on your case about every, you know, every single mistake and everything. But over time, you come to realize like it's very, very important and very necessary for you as a player. Even by yourself, you don't have to wait for the coach to to come and show you film, or you have to go back and rewatch your games and rewatch how your opponents play. Watch, maybe you made a bad decision, um, so that you you know how to improve next time or uh, what to better work on. Like okay, and I'm supposed to flash left instead of flashing right you know i'm supposed to do this instead of doing that you know so it's uh i it's it helps to improve your iq for the for the sport you know whatever sport is you're you're playing is 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 very important you know so for us in basketball it's it's it's, it's been a great help and with the addition of coach lees who is a specialist at this type of thing statistics analytics and video breakdown you know she she knows what she's talking about and she you know she has all the numbers and and everything so it's a it's a great addition and I would thank the the, the government and the, the through the KBF for you know giving us uh, such a such an amazing opportunity to work with her and uh, so this video analytics is it's a very important part of the game it's just as important as waking up going running or it's just as important as going to the weight room because you can have all the muscles, but if you don't have IQ, you're, you're not doing anything. Now, coach, let me come into another aspect of the game, shooting. Um, Three-point shooting, um, maybe shooting uh, within the paint or just go, you know, going for the two points and free throw shooting. How much improvement have you seen in your side since you uh, played in Rwanda? You see, like, uh, going back to uh, what we're talking about, uh, it's... Analytics. Analytics now breaks down the efficient field goal percentage and uh, and uh, what we need to work on. You see, like uh, like uh, in Kigali, in Kigali, the, the, the games that we played, we, we, we were we were the worst shooting field. Uh, we, we had the worst percentage amongst the the, the other three the other three teams. So one, we, we're working on our percentage to. Uh, 
improve our short, short selection and uh, uh, take much better better shots. And uh, you see, like now, uh, these things come in, they, 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 they intertwine together because we, the analytics part and, uh, and uh, video. So, so with that, our, our our short selection will, uh, will will improve because we are, we are taking a lot of contested shots and are giving opponents a lot of uncontested shots. Well, that's a very brave thing to say, coach. Because normally, um, any time you interview a coach, none—I mean, some of them would hardly come out and say, "Yes, we were the worst." But basically, let's uh, look at the point scored: 237 points uh, scored, 199 conceded. Um, those, that was in the tr uh, three matches that you played. Bush, looking at what the coach is saying, how much more work are you putting in as players individually? Because some of the greatest players say, keep shooting that basketball till your palms bleed. Uh, for us as players, man, we, 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 do, we put in a lot of extra work. We don't wait for practice time. Even, uh, okay, we have morning practice, maybe at 7, uh, 7 a.m. in the morning. Right after that, we have to go to the weight room, we go have breakfast. But right after that, we ride back in the gym because we know we have to put in extra work by ourselves so that we can be better. That, and Because uh, we, we really want to win this, you know, for us, for the country, for everybody, you know. So we put in a lot of extra work. Uh, uh, the KBF has been great for us, uh, great to us, and they have provided uh, the facilities that we need in order for us to, to, to put in as much work as possible. So uh, we are not sleeping on the job. We are doing everything possible to make sure that we, we, are, we, we look better, we, we do better, and we win for the country. Coach, let's talk about uh, the injury situation or you know, lack of it in the Moran's camp. What's the state of health of your players? Uh, so far, so far, we we don't have major injuries. We we have we, we have like bumps and bruises, but we don't have major injuries. It's a good thing, because you see, going to in, into this competition, you do not want you don't you don't want uh, to have major injuries. Major inju injuries means that uh, the player may be out for unforeseen amount of time. Now let's talk also about some um, uh, the foreign legion. Uh, those who have come into camp, you could mention, uh, you know, give a confirmation of those, you know, who you, you may be expecting today or much later. Uh, like uh, we, we we are expecting uh, Roni uh, 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 Roni Gundo. Uh, 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 this week, uh, 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 as soon as I think, uh, by Wednesday latest, but he should be here. He should be here any t anytime soon. Then I think by the end of next week or something, we we're ex expecting uh, Preston, uh, uh, Taylor, Tyler, and maybe uh, Joel, Joel Awich. Yeah. Uh, Ariel Okal. He's around. Yeah, Errol Okal has been around. Uh, has been around ever since day one of practice. Um, Desmond. Desmond same. Desmond is Desmond's here. around. Um, Bush. He's living proof that he's here. <laughs> um, for the local contingent, um, Eric Mutoro. We've got uh, Victor Dendo, Griffin Ligare. Um, Fahim. What? How much has it changed for these local players? Um, for example, Bushy for us to ask you, these are your colleagues, some of them uh, you've played with before. Um, how is the cultural blend of basketball, you know, somebody who's been Kenya all their life, and for you, who's been in the United States, you played in Morocco, played in Rwanda? Um, for, for the local players, you know, it's... it's, it's it's helped to improve their game so much more, you know, because um, they, they say if you if you if you want to improve, you play with somebody better, or you you know, saying you you if you play with somebody better, you get better. So these competitions that we have been playing, we have been, we have been together for so long since 2019, uh, 2018. You know, we, we we brought the team together. We've been practicing together. You know, even though we go in and out of the country, but after, you know, we still stay in touch with, we talk about the game, we, you know, we try to improve every, you know, every, every aspect of the, of the game. So we, we, we need our local players to be, they are just as good as, you know, as, as, as the rest of the players in the team. So for us, working together and being together has really helped improve the game. And uh, so they, as they play the local league, they translate the same to their fellow players on the different teams that they're on. So they translate the same. They see how, you know, like, okay, when you, how you carry yourself, what's, what it takes to, for you to recover, what it takes for you to, to you know, to re 
take care of your body, stay in shape, you know, work uh, what you need to work on. So as they translate the same, it also it helps improve the, the, the basketball in the country. So which is a great thing for, for, for basketball in Kenya. Coach Sadat, there's a question that's come through and everyone's asking. There was one player who starred for the Morans in that game against South Sudan. Um, in Swahili, they say Ali Beba team Kabisa. I'm talking about Robert Nyakundi. Where, what's the status of Robert? Uh, Robert, Robert, uh, Robert Nyakundi has been, uh, he, he's, uh, his line of job, he, he has been uh, unavailable to, to join us because uh, he's, uh, by the time he was joining us in January, in January last year, his, his availability was, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't much committed to, 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 he was basically available. But this time round, and uh, in uh, November last year, he was unavailable because of his, uh, his kind of work. Well, at least so the Kenyans now, especially those who basically filled the Nyayo National Stadium in uh, 2019 as Kenya qualified, you know, for the qualifiers proper of Afro Basket, now have got an answer for this. And coach that straight. Um, this is what I would like, you know, to uh, hear from you. The state of basketball following the Morans going up, and what's the direction for the sport in the country? The, the the state of basketball uh, as uh, after after Moran's success has been amazing because now uh, a lot of a lot of people are glued to our our local leagues uh, a lot of our local play uh, our local league players are taking basketball serious we are, we, are, we were before before the covid we were, we were getting more fans in the stadium it it had a, it had a, a, people had hope basket there was hope in basketball because uh, when I was playing back in uh, 90s and early 2000 there the, there was hope but there was no hope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you <laughs> explain that? There was hope but there was no hope. So there was like a direct uh, translation. <laughs> Mostly we were mostly we were, we were like we were, we were like playing playing to. To, to play East and Central, then go African Club uh, Club Championship. The, uh, 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 our, uh, uh, part of our hope was uh, based on clubs, not the national team. Right now, at least now, the national team uh, with with Moran's with Moran's success, we also have uh, we have a lot of development uh, teams that are coming up, which are which are which are kids are players are improving every day which is, which is good for us so so as uh, uh, as we, uh, as morans players retire we'll ha we'll have uh, the next morans uh, joining us so so there, there won't be a, a gap as as it was uh, when i was playing there was uh, there was no continuity in terms of who will come replace this, this uh, the the top players so after after the top players retired it took it took almost forever for for basketball to get back on track now, Bush, the last time Kenya played at Afro Basket, you were one year old. Hmm? You were one. The last time Kenya played at Afro Basket. I was just getting born. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even one yet. I was mm. like a few months. <laughs> you know, like, uh, that's the last time that happened. And uh, for me, just to be able to get this opportunity and uh, for me to have this, this chance at this time, Man, it's amazing, and you don't, you don't. I don't, I don't think you understand how much of a amped up I am to 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 get ready for this. And I, I tell my teammates every day, my everybody, like, this is us. This is our chance. Make history now. We don't, we don't. I do you a casual. So like, we have to. This is our chance. This is the main one. I'm I'm urging all the fans, all the support that you've been giving us. Continue with the same spirit, the same support. We are here to represent you guys, and we are going to make it happen for us. All right. Tom Bush, Wamukota Center for the Kenya Morans. 27 years on, it's an entire generation of players that has passed by since Kenya last played at the Afro you know, Basket Championships. 27 years. So you can, when Bush says he was not yet one year old, then you can tell the kind of passion that he has got for it. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Coach Sadat Gaya, he's the head coach of the Kenya Morans.
thank you for your time this morning. I know you guys have got to go rest. Bush, I know you need, also need to hydrate a lot. Um, three bottles of water within that one hour means that yeah, Coach Sadat has really pushed you to the edge. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and all the best as you prepare for the Afro Basket Qualifiers in Cameroon. They will be played on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of February. Well, next, we'll be having a conversation about football. You know, KBC is the home of African football. The Championship of African Nations continues. But right now, we move over to the more international sports center, Kasarani, where Fred Mwoki is our reporter, and he is with the National Paralympic team. Over to you, Fred. Thank you so much for joining us in this live broadcast. Good morning and welcome to this live broadcast. We're coming to you live from Mo International Sports Center, Kasarani. This is where the National Paralympics team has reported to a training camp as it prepares for the upcoming uh, Paralympic Games qualifiers, the first round of qualification that will be held in Dubai starting 7th to 14th of this month. Remember, there will be second, third and fourth rounds of qualification, but the first round of qualification will be held in Dubai this month. And Earlier on uh, last month, the National Paralympic Committee of Kenya had held, uh, held a national trial to select a Kenyan team that will feature in the round of qualification, and uh, it has just intensified its training. I'm going to have a word with the team manager, Ruth Mweni. She's going to tell us about how the team has been coping up, and uh, uh, so far, is the team well prepared for the first round of qualification? And uh, maybe Ruth, just introduce yourself first and uh, tell us how has been uh, uh, the preparation so far. Uh, my name is Ruth Mweni and I'm the team manager. And we reported here at Kasarani Sports Complex on 27th Saturday for the residential training. Hopefully we'll be leaving on 6th to 14th February, uh, where we are going to participate at the Dubai Paralympic Grand Prix. And the team has been preparing so well with the help of the government and also the coaches and the athletes. They are energized and they are ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yes. So far so good. Would you say uh, maybe uh, are there any key areas that you have identified from the players that they need to work on and improve? Maybe? You know, apart from the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been um, a bit of challenge, but uh, the team has really prepared and they are ready to set uh, their focus because this uh, competition is also going to give them a um, way forward for the Tokyo that is going to happen in August. So uh, a bit from uh, just the human muscle challenges that we usually have for the athletes, we don't have any other challenges because we have been supported. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what are your expectations? Because we know uh, maybe uh, uh, the coronavirus pandemic has affected uh, so many sporting activities and uh, do you think you have adequate time to prepare for these? Yeah, we really have because for us being here at the residential camp, you know, everything is being concentrated here. So nevertheless, we are going to put our hair forward. We are going to do everything that we can to bring back the Duedos and also to make sure that we are making the rankings because of the Tokyo uh, Games. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many categories of uh, sporting activities for the Paralympics uh, uh, are these Paralympians going to feature in when they go to Dubai? We have the athletics, that is combination of uh, track and field. Those who are going to do a uh, field that is javelin and short put in different categories, different classes, and also the athletics. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we understand that uh, many of the, the sports, sportsmen and women have been out of action for quite a long time now. Uh, maybe uh, are there any concerns with uh, maybe injuries and uh, not being fit? Uh, yeah, of course, because of the pandemic challenge, it has been there for anyone else, uh, uh, not only for the sports person, even for us. But uh, we are making sure that uh, they are gaining the strength and the energy they are supposed to have for them to be able to perform and, and uh, have that marked standard. Uh, it's a challenge, but we are going to make it, I know and I believe. Yeah. How easy or hard has it been, you know, uh, preparing a team like this? We know the challenges that come along with it and uh, maybe uh, any support you've received from the government or, or any sponsors? 
Yeah, I can say the government has really supported because for us to be here, it's because of the government, because they have uh, supported us in terms of residential training and also putting the team together because they don't only belong to Nairobi, the people who are here, they belong also to other uh, counties, so they have brought them together so that they may train together and hopefully we are going to go together and make sure that Kenya uh, as the top ranking. Yep. Maybe you can kindly just confirm to us whether this, when this team will be traveling and uh, whether everything is confirmed that the team will, be, will travel to Dubai for the championship. Yeah, the team will uh, be performing and competing at the Dubai World Grand Prix. That is going to be on 6th to 14th February. So I've really confirmed that the team is going to travel. Yes. What's your final message to the Paralympians as they head to Dubai? Uh, just to put uh, God first focus and believe in yourself have that self-confidence that you're going to make it if one person makes it the team makes it if all of them makes it we are going to make it and it's not for the para it's for kenya team yeah well we wish you all the best that has been Ruth Mweni, the team manager for the National Paralympic uh, uh, team that uh, has intensified his training here at Kasarani. And maybe I'm going to have a word with one of the coaches who has been with the team, training with the team since it started its training camp here in Kasarani. Caroline, she's going to tell us about how the team has been coping with the situation. And who do you say so far so good, Caroline? First, introduce yourself and then tell us how, f how f the progress that has been made so far in terms of preparing this team. I'm Caroline Mabel Maleche, and I want to thank our government first and foremost for the way inclusion has been brought on board in Kenya in all directions. I'm trained in special education, and in, that has guided me a lot. That has guided me a lot to be able to realize, to realize that uh, Although we had lost time, I'm a bit low vision myself, but my low vision is good enough to help the others. So I want to say, although we had COVID, we as coaches have continued to encourage our athletes to do a lot of like strengthening, uh, stretches, using like bottles, three, three liters on this side, three liters on this side, using their own sofa chairs where they can to make sure they do all the stretches that we have taught them. However, I also want to encourage the community not to continue excluding them. For example, sometimes they enter a bus or they enter a matatu. And the first comment is, Utalipa kiti yako na ujilipie. Even before this person talks, that so far is not encouraging. However, we are getting out of it, but we need to educate the society at large, whether at church, whether at parties, that we are all the same at the end of the day. We have so many talents in these categories of, uh, of uh, special needs. For example, when we talk of Paralympians, we have those who are blind. In blind, we have cut three categories. Completely blind, we call them T11. We have T12 who have some vision, but they need more uh, assistance. We have T12, T13, who are closer to what I am and can navigate their way a better way. We come to the physically disabled. You find that in physically disabled, for example, in our, uh, our sports, there are those whose limbs, they may be both hands or both feet or each, any of those. Again, they have categories. Then we go, uh, we go in for people who have intellectual disability. Now, again, in the intellectual disability, we have those who are borderline, those who are mild, those who are moderate, those who are severe. Each one of these categories trained with somebody who understands their psychology, it will help them to actually do a lot of the daily activities on their own. So they are all inclusive here we have them. And you have to understand the psychology of every disability. We are not having the deaf because of language problem. They had to be on their own. Caroline, I have to cut you short because of time. Maybe uh, uh, That has been Caroline, one of the coaches, and uh, uh, she's going to, uh, in, in subsequent bulletins, we'll be having, uh, she'll share a lot uh, to do with uh, dealing with this team of the Paralympians. And we wish you all the best as you head to Dubai for the qualifiers. Thank you for Thank you, so Thank you so much. Thank you so much.
Well, that has been one of the coaches, uh, the National Paralympics team coach, who has been with the team here as it prepares for the first round of qualification of the Paralympic Games that we held in Dubai this month. Remember, in the previous Paralympic Games that was held in Rio 2016, Kenya managed to clinch six medals, a total of six medals, three gold, one silver, and two bronze medals. We'll keep you posted about what will be happening later in uh, our bulletins. Back to you, Daniel Wahome. Thank you for having us. Well, well, welcome Fred Mwoki, our reporter at the Moe International Sports and Kasarani, where the National Paralympic team is preparing for the Parathletics Championships that will take place in Dubai later this month. And those are the athletes and uh, getting a little bit of, you know, massage as they train waiting for that global event.